Well, there's Nighthold to discuss and there's what may be an imminent 6.2 to discuss as well. So where are we going to go first then? So I was asked a couple of questions on the shout out video I did like a week ago. One of which was if I've changed my Hikili settings. I, settings, I hadn't really. Uh, I did do an add-ons video with how I set up Hikili. It's always one of those you sort of have to like uh, just sort of massage until it sort of feels right. But I hadn't done anything too bad. I am actually a little bit concerned with 6.2, uh, I have to say. First of all, I've not been able to do as much stuff on the PTR as I would like. In fact, I've not been able to do anything other than pop along and have a look at a few bits and pieces because I've been spending so much time recruiting. It's been a nightmare. And uh, and obviously with the raid on as well. But, I mean, what have we got for that? Uh, I mean, there's our tier 20 bonuses. For the first time, for many years, we're going to be in a position of being able to have the full four set bonus, or the full set bonus from one tier, as well as a partial set bonus from a previous tier, because we're going to be able to have four piece tier 20 and two piece tier 19, at, at least for a bit. I don't know whether we'll be keeping that all the way through. Um, it's all about Blade of Justice, isn't it? <laughs> you know, Blade of Justice generated divine hammer or stroke blade of justice generates one additional holy power uh which i'm not sure about at all I, i'm i'm little i don't know how much is going to be wasted i i mean i know it'll be overall a better thing and then judgment also increasing the damage of divine hammer stroke blade of justice i don't know i i, I don't know that it's bad um i mean it in a way it doesn't really matter does it i mean it's like as long as it sims better than two off-spec pieces, or other off-spec pieces, shall we say, uh, then I suppose you'd still take it. But um, it's not that inspired. But then it wasn't that inspired. The tier, the tier 19 set bonuses that we have now are not particularly inspired. Not inspired is a lot better than pain in the arse, I have to say. But, um, yeah, I mean, I look at these and I just think, you're not really trying, are you, Blizzard? Not really trying very hard at all. But... Uh, yeah, I don't know to what extent we would change when we'd use judgment because of that. I don't, I mean, I really don't see that we would. Presumably it'll just be on a uh, a little buff that, because I have not been able to test this out. Um, I suppose it'll just be on a little buff and the next time you use Divine Ham, you get the benefit of it. But then are you going to be sort of thinking to yourself, well, let's, you know, make sure we use a judgment between each Divine Hammer if we can. Really weird. You've got seven legends to still know about. Well, have you got the belt at least, Evan? I mean, the belt's all right. And the ring's all right. The cloak's a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. I, you know, when I decide on some Mythic Plus dungeons, I sometimes don't take the cloak because there might be other things that are more useful. I don't mind at all because the cloak's a pain in the ass. Uh, judgment uptime, yeah. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be... Um, Round about what it is now. My haste keeps bouncing around. It always seems to settle on round about 25%. It, it goes a little bit down, it goes a little bit up, and then it seems, so, seems to keep, it's like a pendulum. It seems to keep passing through 25. I've got six legendaries now, I think, but I've been really lucky. Uh, I have been lucky. None of them are awful. I've got the cloak, the belt, Leadrin's Fury Unleashed, Sephir's a secret, which I have never used, but it's not disastrous you know you know maybe i should use it in some dungeons though or i don't uh, i've got the wrists were nice in fact the wrists i'm going to get rid of that because if we're going to be talking oh get away if we're going to be talking about um legendaries there have been a few legendary changes of course haven't there um seth is a secret is going to give us a passive increased movement speed and haste it still in, you know works as it does now in terms of uh, when you use a crowd control or something like that, an interrupt type thing, um, you get the boost, but you've always got a passive one, so that's pretty good. Um, so that means even on fights where you're not going to get to use it, on some raid fights, it, it's not disastrous. It's not going to be one of your best if you've got options, but it's not the the disastrous one. Um, Agrimar's stride has been given some sort of throughput there. And the, even the wrists have been given a better like damage shield, double the damage shield on it. Uh, and then the helmet as well. Uh, we can generate holy power with it. Not bad. How is 7.2 looking for us? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
because uh, it all it's all comparative, isn't it? You could look at it and go, okay, well that seems all right. And what we're going to compare it to? All you can compare it to, whenever a patch is imminent, is people will produce something like, where did I have that thing again? Like that. So if I just cover that up. I mean, this this isn't um, this isn't for seven point two, by the way. This is for Nighthold now, around about the fiftieth percentile for Mythic bosses. But all you can actually see is something like that, f done on SimCraft, um, and and it'll always be a patchwork fight. Which if it doesn't actually, if there aren't any real patchwork fights in Tomb of Sargeras, they're meaningless. And the other thing, it the other thing as well is when seven point two comes out, we're actually still into Nighthold. So we shouldn't really be thinking about Tomb of Sargeras anyway just yet, because that'll be like that's more likely to be seven point two point five, you know, with Blizzard really not wanting to tie raids up to those. Um, hmm. Yeah, you can. I mean, you can be lucky, you can be unlucky. I mean, obviously, farming more, you will make your own luck. I mean, all the people that do stupid amounts, like there's a paladin in our guild who does. Uh, I mean, he's got all three of his artifacts to 54 and has for some time. And he's got like 10 legendaries now. I think he got about three in a week. But, um, but I mean, you, when you've done as much as he does, you are always going to get... Um, I can see you in chat. You are always going to get more stuff. But as I say, I mean, I've, I consider myself lucky because, you know, I've got the cloak, the, the good ring, the belt the bad ring, the neck, and the wrists. So I've got defensive ones for when we're going to horrendous Mythic Plus dungeons. I was getting my ass kicked in a Mythic Plus yesterday and then decided to just go to the defensive ones. Couldn't be asked with it anymore. How, is it import how important is it for a normal heroic raid to hit 54 traits before 7.2? Not at all. Not at all. Um, obviously, because the thing is, if you're doing normal or heroic mode, you know, there's always room for one. As long as you pull your weight on those fights, there's always room for one more. Unless it's absolutely full with 30, they're not going to drop you in favour of someone else. It's only if you're not pulling your weight that it's like, well, everyone else is having to pick up the slack. So I don't think it... You know, the, the traits having to sort of max them out is more important for people pushing the hardest content, the mythic raids. But... Of course, Blizzard, I mean, they kept saying they didn't actually want us. They didn't expect us to get the 54 traits, certainly not by the time Nighthold opened. So what they've done, of course, in uh, in 7.2 with the new traits is they're getting rid of those 20 points and refunding us the artifact power. Now, where are they? And then the, the, what we get is this new one where we've got all the new traits where we can get up to 50. And it's like, they're basically saying, right, let's see you max this one out then, because it ain't happening. It's not happening at all. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah, at Convergence of Fates and Scorpion Trinket most used. Scorpion Trinket, draft's not, I don't, I don't see draft being very good for us. It's not, it was only going to be good when we could use Convergence of Fates to get it to line up with Crusade each time. When that went out the window, it's like, well, what's the point? Um, but Convergence of Fates is, is a sore point for me this weekend because I have coined Elisand at least once on Heroic. I've not killed her on Mythic, of course, but on Heroic and, and, the, and a couple of weeks on Normal in the first couple of ne weeks of Nighthold. And I get, and it's not just that I don't get Convergence of Fates. I haven't got any loot from her. I get Artifact Power every time. I went on my Hunter on Friday, Nighthold Normal, Got a Convergence of Fates, 875, which would have done my Retribution Paladin. And then this morning on my hunch, I went into LFR and I got an 870 Convergence of Fates. Like Blizzard's trying to taunt me. The Scorpion Trinket, I mean, I, as soon as it opened, I actually got that on normal and I tried it out. And on some fights, it was pretty good and some fights, it wasn't, it wasn't that reliable. But if I had a high, if, I, if a Mythic one would drop and I could get that, I would use that for a lot of them. Uh, do I recommend Divine Hammer almost all the time now? Yes. Um, yeah, I do. I don't really change out of it. Except, I mean, when we're progressing on Star Auger, I use Blade of Wrath for Star Auger. But for other bosses, even like Trilliax, where you're not going to get much use, because it's on farm now and we know we're going to kill it, I don't bother swapping out of Divine Hammer. Um, so I just stay on it because you are losing almost nothing. And if there's any cleave at all, like Croesus is a classic, absolute classic. Most of the time is single target, like the vast majority of that fight single target. 
And even when it's not, you're only gonna, you're not gonna do a lot of cleave unless people are very bad at soaking. We are actually pretty bad at soaking sometimes, but not as bad as some. Um, so you're not getting a lot out of Divine Hammer, but you are gonna gain out of it, even with that very small amount of cleave there. Oh dear, it's all coming thick and fast. If someone asks something, I don't answer it by the way, just ask it a bit later and uh, and I'll get back to it. Um, <laughs> so hold on, shit, I've completely forgotten now. Someone's mentioned something unworthy. Which one is that? I'm gonna to have to put this up, I'm sorry, because I can't see a load of things. Um, so let's have a look. Crusader, da 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 da. New change of the new change artifact talent judge unworthy. Well, let me let me just see that one, so I can remember which is which. It's not that one, is it? You can go away. No. Which one's judge unworthy? There we go. Um, yeah, the fifty percent chance to switch to a nearby target. Uh, it's not changed from that, has it? Is that still what it is? I don't like chances to spread to a nearby target. It's like okay. It goes back to the days for me, unless it's changed and I'm I'm, compl I'm using an out-of-date one there. I, hopefully I'm not. Um, it goes back to the days of Empowered Divine Storm, where it was like, if this thing procced and you had a bit of AoE to do, you would do shitloads of damage. But if it didn't proc, you'd do very little. It sounds like the same sort of thing. It's You're putting it into an RNG. I don't like RNG with, with, to that extent. You know, if I've got some cleave to do on a raid boss fight, I want to know that I can do it consistently. Um, I don't want to be hovering between do well and do badly. Do I recommend Divine Hammer for Mythic Botanist? No, I actually don't use it. Um, I suppose now that we've, we've killed it a few times now, and it's our re-kills have actually been very good. So, I mean, we one-shot it this Wednesday. Um, I was amazed we one-shot anything this Wednesday. But... Um, so I wasn't using Blade of Wrath, but I suppose you're not. It's not going to be very costly. The last you got to bear in mind the last phase, the Solarist. If you choose to do that last, which I think people basically are going to, uh, is a single target burst to the end. So because that's the key part of the fight, I would still recommend using Blade of Wrath if you're progressing on it at least, because nothing else in the fight really matters. There are people who are better at DPS in like the lashes and better at cleaving on the, the with the boss and the plasma sphere and all the rest of it. So I wouldn't do that. Um hang on. I will upload this to YouTube. So let's have a look. But yeah, um no I don't like this sort of thing. at all. Uh, it obviously is going to mean that you're going to do more damage, of course, because 50% of the time you're going to do more damage with your Divine Storm to another mob. Um, but that's about it. What four tier pieces am I using? I am using the helm, the gloves, the legs, and the shoulders. And the reason for that is I have the legendary cloak, so I use that. So that's I'm not going to use the tier cloak. And I also have a pretty high item level haste versatility chest with a socket I believe so I'm not going to use the tier chest either so uh, those are the four bits I use so so uh, gloves legs helm and and uh, shoulders what situations do I use fire zeal or greater judgment for me that is a piece of piss I use fires because I have the legendary cloak <laughs> That's all, that's all there is to it. With some people, you know, let's say zeal and, and fires are simming similar, I'd always say just feel, go with whichever one you feel most comfortable with because some will always feel a bit more comfortable. The downside to zeal is if you take zeal and divine hammer, you sort of know about it. it uh, the rotation can feel very slow. So you don't generally want to take both of those. Even if, like sims tell you it's better, when well, you can take it, but it feels very sluggish. You know, we already get a bit of a sluggish feeling when Crusade suddenly fades. It's like you're fire, especially when heroism is up as well. You're firing off your Crusade and heroism. Uh, everything's rapid fire, too rapid, quite frankly. And then Crusade drops off, heroism drops off, and it's like, oh. Uh, it's a bit like the slow time on Chronomatic Anomaly. 
And if you take Zeal and, and Divine Hammer, and because Dan, Divine Hammer is used on so many things, I think even when I don't always take the cloak in Mythic Plus, I still tend not to use Zeal. Whereas I did use Zeal quite a lot before I got the Legendary Cloak, but not anymore. I think Fires is now is becoming increasingly standard. Uh, and with the cloak as well, you just, you know, you, you're going to get more use out of the cloak if you can build Holy Power more quickly. Because even sometimes during Crusade, it's not all, well, unless you've got the haste really high up, it's not always a given you're going to be able to keep that buff rolling. Um, yeah, for Mythic Plus Fires, because again, if I'm using the Legendary Cloak, even if I'm not, as I say, it's just faster building up the Holy Power. Um Zeal, I used to really like Zeal. I used to use Zeal a lot in Mythic Plus, and I don't now at all. Uh, as I say, even if I don't use the cloak, because I'm using Divine Hammer, and I don't want it to be too, because otherwise it's just too slow. So anyway, that's a lot. So I don't, yeah, Judge and Worthy, I don't really like that. Let's have a look at the other ones. Um, oh no, that's the that's the one we're never going to get. Blessing of the Ashbringer. This is just making us use our greater blessings. It's like, they're completely and I, they're completely irrelevant. I can I can well imagine there's a lot of people not using their greater blessings. It used to annoy me when we had greater blessing and might because it's such an obviously good thing to use. These are not like there's a resto druid in our guild. If I don't put greater blessing and wisdom on them, they will tell me. They will point it out. No one else asks for it. And although I do put greater blessing of kings on one of our tanks. Uh, if I didn't, no one would say a thing. No one would say a blind thing. So this is just a okay, case, you know, I think they've just observed that they've got rid of Greater Blessing and Might. They saw that that was a complete no hope. They should have sort of listened to me a year early, but never mind. Um, but they've kept the other Greater Blessings in. It's actually quite funny with, with the Greater Blessings because I was just, I was doing some stats on my channel this morning, getting ready for a subscriber report tomorrow. And I came across the first video I did when the Legion Greater Blessings were announced. And it was actually quite positive because the way I read it, first of all, it actually sounded quite good. And then the next video I did a few months later, when all its horror was revealed, was like, uh, no, this is like the worst thing ever. What kind of sim would I recommend for testing builds for Mythic Plus? A uh, bit of Helter Skelter. You can remember, you can, um, with SimCraft, First of all, you can drop it down from raid boss to like dungeon boss. And you can also increase the number of mobs. So like a Helter Skelter, because it's got a lot of movement in there, uh, potentially. It depends on the dungeon as well. Some dungeons have absolutely belting loads of trash and some don't. Hi, Amora. Um, can we can we use the tier 19 two-piece and mix it with the tier 20 two-piece? You can mix the tier 19 two-piece and mix it with the tier 24 piece. Blizzard have said they're fine with it. They're not going to put anything in to try and stop us doing it. Um, they're, they're okay with it. They're cool with it. And we are going to be able to do that. And it is going to be sensible for us to do that. As long as we're not losing stupid amounts of item level from it. Assuming you've got the legendaries to do it. Obviously, if you have the legendary cloak or shoulders and you don't have any other DPS legendaries, you're not going to be doing that. But if you've got the belt and Liadrin's Fury ring, like I have, then you use those two and you will use a two set and a four set. So that's no problem. This priest, yeah, we don't have a priest healer. I've been trying to find one. Um, there's a few things I've been trying to find we can't actually get. I've not been able to find a healing priest. We're not utterly desperate, um, but it would be nice. But I've not been able to get one. Uh, rogues are also very sticky. In fact, one of our resto shamans has had to change to rogue because we cannot keep hold of rogues. Like, we get a rogue in the guild and they just bugger off. We got one quite recently. Uh, reset before last. They, they came for the farm stuff. Did pretty well. They were alright, actually. Uh, they weren't, like, blasting at the top of the meters, but they were pretty good. They did well. Uh, they picked up the new fights pretty well. And then, they were still in the guild, but they just didn't turn up for the next raid night and didn't say a thing. And then, like, the next day didn't say a thing. And they just silently removed themselves from Discord and everything. So, yeah, we can't keep hold of we can't, I've almost given up looking for rogues because we can't keep hold of them. Um, but yeah, so Dispriest, maybe, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about Dispriest. But certainly a, a Resto Druid that we have asks for it. 
And that's it. That's the only person that ever asked for any greater blessing. No one else cares. So yeah, that's why I can I can well understand this trait coming in. Um, thirty percent haste. Yeah, I don't have thirty percent haste. Uh, it's uh, I did have. No, I've never had it ever. Legion, have I? Well, not before raids opened up. Anyway, I've sometimes sort of crept up there, and then something just pulls me back down again. Um, yeah, trinkets is a difficult one for me. Uh, Marullinus. It's I've got. I mean, they're okay. I've got an eight seven five. Um, crit strength trinket off Odin and I've got an oh no actually that might be a higher level item level one that might be 890 or something and I've got an 875 Horn of Valor but I don't really have anything else for them to compete with Um, 30% is a lot yeah I I, uh, I mean I don't try and push for that I, I gem and enchant haste um, but at the end of the day if the gear I have is not going to let me get up to that it's no big deal uh, it's all a balance, isn't it? You just keep simming stuff and see what gives you the best chance. But, you know, making sure that you're not simming pitch. Unless, of course, it is your job just to focus a boss, there's no point in simming patchwork. Uh, our Beast Lord is, is one I increasingly use in Nighthold. I've completely forgotten what my crit is now because that's taken a huge hit since Nighthold's been out. It used to be like over 35%. It's gone way down now. Way down. But my versatility has gone up. Uh, Horn of Valor 900... Uh, well, uh, that's the thing. You see, if you're using Draft of Souls, you will have naturally more because it's got haste on it, and just a standard. So you're bound to have uh, a decent amount of haste. Um, haste, you, you can manage with anything, I would say, from about 20... Whatever feels comfortable. I wouldn't be comfortable with anything much below, like, 23%, say, haste, roughly. Memento is decent. Yeah, if you get a high-level memento, that's that's decent enough. Uh, sorry, Nick, you're putting links in there. I think they might be banned, so that won't work. Um, but ultimately, I just sim. I just sim stuff, and whatever it says, I'm like to get the best use out of. I mean, you can keep high item level pieces, because sometimes you might want to swap from fight to fight. If on a particular fight, the focus is on cleave, and then on another fight, the focus is on just single targeting the boss, well, there's a difference in maybe some of the pieces of gear you'd want to use. Um, I feel sorry now. I've actually just started playing my hunter uh, as an artist, you know, so it's a pure DPS class. You feel so because I have so many like profiles on pawn um, for like the different specs and cleave and single target as well. Trying to work out what gear to use. Uh, I suppose that's another thing as well. Yeah, if you main one particular spec then the stuff you put on to, to do another specs job will probably be suboptimal. Especially, I can imagine if you've got like tier sets, because, or is it? Am I just making this up? I suppose if you had the tier cloak, I mean, most pieces don't have actually enchants on them, but if you had any sockets in them, or if it was the cloak where you've got an enchant on it, um, and you've got it for your main spec, it's not necessarily going to be all that useful for your off spec, especially, um, <coughs> sorry, Especially the uh, the cloak because it'll go for the wrong primary stat. <coughs> Excuse me, cough. Um, yeah, the Arcana Crystal is a really good trinket. It's another one that my hunter got lucky with. Convergence is doing very well for Rhett as long as you don't delay using Crusade. So on a fight like Tychondrius, where you will delay using Crusade, then it's no point. You're missing out on it. There's no point in it. But any fight where you can use Crusade as soon as it's available, which is most fights, I would say, then yes, Convergence Effects is good. I wish I had it, and I don't. And I am only going to be able to coin it, because I'll never get it, because it's, like, it's not dropped for us ever. So the only there's only two people in our guild that have got it, and they both coined it. Um... So it's a long time before I'd get it if it ever dropped. So I do need to coin it. And Nellisand is not playing ball. Uh, Eye of Command. Yeah, if you do Sims for single target, especially Patchwork, Eye of Command will come out on top because you're always on the same target. Now, it's not that Eye of Command is a single target trinket. It's good for Cleave as well. But what it needs is that you are on the same target. So the more times you switch targets, the less good it is. 
So like Scorpron, for example, it's a cleave fight, but you're always on the same target, the boss, so it'd still be good for that. And you can always hit the boss, unless you have to run out for a really awkward like thing for Shockwave, but that's very rare. Conversion for Fate for Mythic Plus, yeah, especially if you're using that off cooldown. Like at the moment, we seem to be getting affixes that are very making the trash unfriendly and the bosses are fine. Especially with Fortified. So you might as well just use uh, Crusade off cooldown. Nothing changed about Convergence to make it good again. It was, it, it was always going to be f decent. It's just that it used to be amazing. And it's not anymore. Uh, it's no longer amazing. It's just decent. It's not as good for us as it is for all the specs. That's why I say, if it drops, I'm not getting it. Other people are going to get it ahead of me because it's better for them. It just happens to be pretty much best for us, that's all. Um, how much does it reduce the cooldown of Crusade? Approximately about 10 seconds or something. I don't know. It It, it can vary. It's not very much if you've got Crusade. It's something like 1.2 procs per minute. Basically about 10 seconds off. But, you know, it might mean that you can use it a little bit, bef you know, earlier and uh, and use it at a better point of the fight or give you a bit more flexibility on that. But it's not saving you a huge amount. I don't, I'm not sure how reliable it is either because I don't have it. I just don't, they won't let it me have it. I had it on PTR when I was testing it, but that's before they nerfed it. So since they nerfed it heavily, I haven't been able to test it. Well, not on my Paladin anyway. So you've got a 905. Well done. I hate you. Um, it shouldn't scale with haste, really, Convergence of Face. That would be strange. It shouldn't really be, because it's proc per minute based, isn't it? So it shouldn't have anything to do with your haste. Rotational change with the cloak. Yes, track it. <laughs> track your cloak. And if there's one second left on it and you've got three holy power, use it. Or, you know, because of course with our set bonuses you might not always need three holy power. But if you can use a spend, make sure that you know always that you, whether or not you can use a spender and make sure you know what the time is on the, the cloak debuff. And if you can use something, use it rather than let it fade. Sometimes you have to let it fade and then it's sometimes better just to build it up again. Um... Uh, Converse effects, you had Crusade up for most bridge breaks. Yeah. I mean, with... Uh, it could be awkward on Crotus, actually, I suppose. Six-minute fight. Because, like, for me, without Convergence of Fates, I don't sweat it with when to use Crusade. Because I can only use it three times. I use it at the start. And then I've got two other uses of it. And it doesn't matter. I can delay it for a minute. And I'm still going to get three uses out of it. So I can use it. So what I do is I use it for the second time just after the burning pitch when I'm going on the ads. And then the third time I use it when we're on the final bridge section. But where with Convergence of Fates, then you might be thinking, well, maybe I can sneak an extra use out of it. And uh, which you should be able to if you use it on cooldown. So then I suppose it gets a bit more interesting on Croesus. Did I check the new trinkets? Yeah, I don't have things from here. I was trying to find images from here and I couldn't do that. I have checked them out. Uh, I can't remember a lot about them, I'm afraid. And I, as I say, I was earlier this morning, I was trying to find them furiously. On, <laughs> and I failed. Um, and I couldn't get onto the PTR either, which was not helpful. So uh, I'm, not, I'm, only gonna be able to, I'm not gonna be able to talk very sensibly about those, I'm afraid though. Uh, I will be covering those nearer the time. But remember, 7.2 is not when they're going to be available. Like, I really wouldn't worry too much about Tomb of Sargeras stuff at the moment because that, that isn't imminent. 7.2 is imminent, but Tomb of Sargeras is not. Kill Jaden. Well, Kill Jaden's... Uh, yeah, it's... I don't know how awkward it is to use. It's a nice one, obviously. It's just not the best DPS legendary you can get. Uh, is it worth to refresh the cloak buff without judgment buff? That would depend. I would say no, by the way, but it would technically depend on your mastery, wouldn't it? Because you've got to think about it this way. The cloak is going to mean that that spender is going to do 15% more damage. So what will you... Now, if your judgment means that your spender is going to do 20% more damage, which it is in my case, then 
actually, I'm being silly by trying to um, use a spender without the judgment debuff up because I get more benefit from using judgment. Whereas if your mess mastery is virtually nil, then you get more benefit. But I don't think it's... My mastery is quite low and, and my spenders will still do 20% more damage with the judgment debuff on it. So it's not worth using the, to, to just to save the cloak buff. It's not worth it if it means you're using it without judgment, really. <clears throat> Unless, of course, you were going to use it anyway, because sometimes I do still get into situations sometimes where I use a spender without the judgment up just because it's not going to come up, you know, usually when you've got target switching type situations going on. Um, yeah, Krosis is a very, very tight DPS check. Uh, of all the Tychondrus is fairly tight as well actually but I would say of all the four middle bosses Croesus is is always the one I mean you know we don't kill it loads earlier now than we did when we first killed it Liadjin's Fury become but what's wrong with Liadjin's Fury I mean I don't use it now I miss it actually because I find my, I had it for so long, and I was using it for so long because it's my first legendary. The because I got into the habit during Crusade of whenever I had three holy powers spending, and I had I did that all the time, not just to build up the stacks, but even after that, um, I didn't let myself get too many holy power so that I didn't waste any. And now I don't need to. It's like I'm fine building up to five because I'm not suddenly going to generate an extra holy power and waste it. You're on botanist. Oh, hang on a minute. So, well, it depends on your guild. So, I'm talking to George now. So, we're on botanist now. Should we go spellblade or Tycho after? Well, we did botanist after spellblade and Tychondrius. We did that last of the four medium bosses. Uh, it depends on your guild. I mean, like, we didn't do Allurial early on because we didn't have five healers. We didn't do botanist early on because we have a guild full of chimps. So, we did Tychondrius. Um... Because the only thing we had to get through people's thick heads on Tychondrius was let the warrior and the feral druid take, and the mage, we had a mage, a feral druid, and a warrior who were going to beast down the ads. They specced to make sure that they could beast down the bats in, the, in that phase. Let them take the first few orbs. Everyone else bugger off. And, and, and that's how we did that. And that was pretty much all we had to do. And make sure that the bats were grouped up as well so that they could be AoE'd. And once we, that was the only thing we had to do on that fight. The rest of it was relatively straightforward so it depends on your guild and their own sort of skills and so on spellblade is not actually a hideously difficult fight there's coordination required in it but you only need a few people to do anything relatively complex and even though it's not that bad but you you could do with the five healers i would say yeah well it's not that mastery is bad it's just that it is the least good out of all the stats you can have mostly i suppose if it got left very far behind it creeps up a bit like for me all my stats at the moment are roughly equal they're very close together including mastery but that's because i have so much of the others and i don't have that much mastery i've got away with it so far how long i'll carry on getting away with that i don't know um yeah because i think with with going to croesus first is i'm not saying that guilds shouldn't do that of the first of the medium bosses. It's just you should question it. Because, just because other people... Because I always think it sort of builds into itself. It's like a, a, a vicious cycle. To begin with, a lot of people went Croesus first. So then other guilds looked at it and go, oh, people are doing Croesus ahead of Spellblade. And, and then you get to a point where it just looks like Croesus is the boss you should do fourth. And maybe it's not. I don't have. I have no interest in passing whatsoever. I'm interested in making sure I kill the boss. So, yeah, there's plenty of other people like their passing. It depends on timing. I would suggest, though, surely, it depends on on timing. I mean, obviously, timing your crusade for when the ads are up instead of when you might get best use out of it. But uh, like, if you kill, the, if you start killing the boss before the final arcane ads, you're going to start ranking a little bit lower. I would think. No, there's a lot of people at high item level. Like, because I look at this when I'm trying to recruit, you look at, there's a lot of people high item level and, and low artifact level, 
And there's a lot of people high item level and high artifact level but don't have good legendaries. And there's all sorts of measures now. Um, item level is not... I don't think it was ever the be-all and end-all, but it used to be a very powerful indicator of how strong your character is. Not necessarily how well you played it, but how strong your character is. But now, you know, with the difference between having good and bad legendaries and the difference between having high artifact level and low artifact level and, and other things mixed in as well, um, item level is no longer an indicator, really. How you get into Mythic, uh, well, <laughs> there's, a pa there's a path, definitely. You have to get your, your fortunate position, potentially. Obviously, what you need to do is get Mythic logs, good Mythic logs. And then you need to get yourself into a, a guild that's only killing a few on Mythic. Um, like the aforementioned 3 out of 10 Mythic guilds, because they will be struggling like anyone to get recruits. So it's relatively straightforward to get into them. And relatively straightforward, I say. I'm not saying you can just pick a guild. Oh, yeah, I'll join you. Um, but you will find one. Especially if you're willing to transfer. If you're not willing to transfer, then I suppose you have to be on a high population server. And then you just have to outgrow that guild and demonstrate through your logs. Not necessarily just in terms of overall damage, but that you can do mechanics as well. And then you just have to move on. You just keep moving up. I mean, don't like do it every few weeks. You've got to expect to... That the, I, I would sort of like when I because I took a really long break uh, during Wrath I stopped just before Alduar came out because uh, at the time just when before Alduar came out Wrath was uh, rubbish it was absolute turkey and uh, and then I came back towards the end of, of Cataclysm and I fully expected uh, not to get into a raiding guild at all because I thought well there's only one tier left I'm just going to have to do what I can and then try and get in for one for the next expansion I was fortunate I got into a raiding guild um, before then, but you know, I had the legendary system. Tronlin, Tronin, sorry, is the worst. It's absolutely appalling, appalling. I, uh, I have no words from that to truly express my contempt, and I can say that without being accused of being salty, at least, because I've done pretty well out of it. You know, I can't complain about the legendary system personally, but it's shocking, absolutely shocking that they've done this. Uh, and I think it will be even worse in the next expansion because when you look at the things that Blizzard support about it, it's going to be worse in the next expansion unless there's a massive change in mind. Um, yeah, if you have 54 and 2 specs. But, I mean, that should at least show... If you've got 54 and 2 specs, you can probably think yourself unlucky if you don't have Biss Legendaries because you should have quite a lot of Legendaries um, unless there's a load of content that inexplicably you're not doing. But if you've got that much artifact power, you would think that you've probably got uh, a few. But yeah, there will be some people that are just unlucky. I know they're going to add more legendaries. There's the, there's the crafted ones that they're adding. Um, they made no secret of the fact that they're going to add legendaries through Legion. There may well even be some new ones coming in 7.3 when we go to Argus. It's, uh, oh my God, it's going to be horrendous. It is. It's just Diablo. It's. It's. I don't even know what it is. Because I remember the game when getting an epic was was newsworthy. And now we get, you know, you get epics within a few weeks of getting to level cap. So it's like then legendaries became the new epic, and now even legendaries are just, you know, the only thing that makes them special at all is the fact you're limited in how many you can wear. That's That artificial device that Blizzard had to put in to stop the system being completely laughable. Yeah. Uh, would you say the legendaries that you have will also impact the relics you should get? Um, yes. Because the relics that, that work with Crusade, Leadrin's Fury Unleashed and Chain of Thrain, are obviously... Along with trinkets as well that you can line up with it, like Horn of Valor and Faulty Countermeasure, will inevitably strengthen the value of a Wrath of the Ashbringer trait. Now, I currently have three of those relics, so I've got six out of six Wrath of the Ashbringer. Um, now, two of them are the holy relics from Mythic Chronomatic Anomaly, so they're decent item level. So that's fine. That you know, I would have those. They're my highest item level holy ones anyway. But I have an let me get this right. I have an 885 fire relic from Xavius with that. 
Now, there are higher item level ones um, in Nighthold Mythic that I would now replace that with, but they're just not dropping. Um, but I have an 895 Fire Relic in my bags, but it's not Wrath of the Ashbringer, so I don't equip it, because that 10 item levels is not worth it. So yeah, there are some legendaries. So that's what I mean about Simonet. It's like you can look on, like if you look on the Retribution, or the Paladin Discord, I should say, and it's got sort of values for each of the relic traits. They're done with the standard sets. Your personal ones will always be different because there are things that can strengthen or weaken uh, the value of a Crusade relic for you. Uh, Helm, Cephas, Kill Janes and the Braces. Well, the Braces are nice for Mythic Plus, especially with crap affixes and Cephas as well. But I suppose for raiding, Kill Janes is alright. I mean, it's, you know, it's the best trinket. The Helm, obviously, absolutely appalling. I mean, I'm not saying it's of no use, potential use in, in dungeons, of course. Especially on something, I guess, like uh, Neltharion's Lair, where you can use it on the Pelters uh, more frequently. That's always a good thing. But yeah, I mean that's not a good collection for uh, for raiding, is it? Yeah, getting yeah two legendaries one after the other. As I say, there's a, a paladin in our guild, our holy paladin. He he got like three in a week. He got three legends in like a week. He was annoying everyone by going, oh, I had a legendary today. What's going on? Um, I don't look at my overall damage numbers really, so I don't know. Yeah, but you, I mean, your overall damage is so, like, worthless. Because on some fight, if you're looking at your overall damage, you're likely to be sneaking Divine Storms on things you shouldn't. It's like, your damage on some fights should be low. Like, your overall damage. But it should be high on the priority targets, what you're kicking your head in. Like, for example, I'd go back to Tychondrius. Now, Tychondrius, I could be pretty good at. I could... On the bat phase, I could use Consecration, Divine Hammer. I could use Crusade. And I could blow the bat, get the first door, blow the bats up. Amazing damage numbers. But there's no point. We have people that are pretty good at doing that. Um, they don't even need to use their cooldowns on it. So I'm, I'll just use it on the boss and make sure I'm top on the boss. Or try and be top on the boss anyway. Um, problem with the Legends is that it's not fair that someone can basically run two dungeons of raiding it. This legend with this one I can run. Yeah. I'm not... I mean, we have, we live in a world now where we're not going to get better legendaries because we're raiders. That was years ago when that was the situation. Um, that's gone. The reason why it's unfair, I would say, is because of the huge disparity in them. It's not possible to make as many legendaries as they have and, and make them as random as they have and not have luck play a part. It's like Blizzard always said it's not going to affect the world first race. Sort of didn't, it sort of didn't, didn't it? Because the only reason it didn't affect it is because those guilds rolled multiple of the same bloody class for alts and just played whichever character happened to get the best legendaries. You know, they solved Blizzard's problem for them by playing in a way that the rest of us simply can't. Uh, it's a nonsense. It's a bit like now. I mean, I'm recruiting. I was looking at a, a warlock today. Unfortunately, it's a gnome. I may actually be about to recruit a gnome. Don't judge me. No pun intended. But um, you look at their numbers, and they're not brilliant. They might be okay. We're a bit desperate. But they haven't got the Bis legendaries. So that instantly, you sort of know. And that's another thing when you're trying to look at if see if people are suitable or not. It's like, well, if they don't have the Bis legendaries, and you can't just say, well, they haven't got the Bis legendaries, so there's no point in taking them. They might get it in the next, you know, they might join your guild and then do an emissary cash and then instantly get it. Um, so you're constantly having to try and take account of these things. It's, it's much more difficult. And, and that's the unfair aspect of it for me, um, that if you don't have any decent legendaries at this time, it may not be your fault. It may be your fault. It may be you're just not doing what you should be doing. Maybe you're not doing LFR or something like that. Um, and doing all this content that has a decent chance of awarding it to you. But equally, it may not be your fault. Tercondrius. No, I don't even do a sneaky Divine Storm. I behave myself. I take Divine Hammer because we still want to do damage to the bats. What's important on Tychondrius is you blow the first few bats up really quickly. 
because you need to blow the first few up quickly to get the larger number of bats spawning. It's like a chain reaction with the bats. Um, so you just simply won't have enough bats if you don't get those first few. So it's like blowing all your results, making sure you've got five holy power before you go into the bat phase and then blowing, you just spending them quickly to get those bats done. Uh, we shouldn't be blowing cooldowns on the bats, really. If there's no need to do it, you just don't. You just use it on the boss when we've got a buff up. Because the boss itself is a tight DPS check as well. Like, we don't kill it tidily. I think, of the times we've killed it, I think the first two were done after Berserk. And, and con you know, quite a bit after Berserk as well. How can you send me your logs? You could send them... It depends what you want me to do with your logs. If you want me to do an analysis video, you can just send me, like... If you look on like my videos, I usually have like, my Gmail account email address there. That's the best place to send them. I have had people send them as a message through YouTube. The problem with that is that because it has a link in it, any message that has a link in it automatically goes into the spam folder. And I struggle as it is to read comments, just the comments that are put in. I only very rarely get time to have read all the comments and then have a look in the spam folder to see if there's anything because there's a lot of comments that go in the spam folder that's actually you think well that's actually not spam um so i'm not quite sure how they judge but you know whatever it's it's a good idea that we have a spam folder so but if you send it to the email address then i will definitely see it uh, or you can find me on discord and link it to me there but it depends what you want to do with the box um yeah well i'll tell you what used to be nice when we had hammer of wrath we miss hammer of wrath and you you know, it was the meme with retribution paladins killing a boss in you know when everyone else was dead and you're inside bubble just firing you know kiting it around firing hammer of wrath at it um done that a few did that even as back far as vanilla i remember killing velastras which is the second boss in uh blackwing lair with that but we don't have Hammer of Wrath anymore. So we can't do that. We just have to, you know, do the best we can. I'm going to change this over to something else. Let's have a look. Well, we've got new trait three. What else was there? New trait two. Righteous Verdict. Let's stick this over here. Holy power spending abilities increase the damage of your neck blade of justice by 20%. This, I guess, would be the key one for uh, changing the way we do our, our priority because Blade of Justice is not a tiny amount of damage. So this is obviously favouring not using Blade of Justice twice before spending. Uh, do you think Bliss might give us a back our Hammer of Wrath? No, I don't. I think we've lost it. It's gone. They don't want us having an execute. I didn't see that we needed it. I mean, yeah. how would you bring? I mean, it's, it's, they'll argue it's brought back in the form of that PVE rubbish talent. Uh, as if any, I don't like PVE anyway. I don't have it. But yeah, they didn't want us having an execute. So there you go. Uh, this one, yeah, Righteous Verdict will change our gameplay a little. Surely. Surely. Um. <laughs> I am actually just thinking when I'm going to be able to do the video for this because uh, I've got another three weeks at work before I get any time off. I'm so busy at the moment. Um, what are my thoughts on the itemization Q&A earlier? Uh, if that's the one they did on the Blizzard did on Thursday, I still haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I, it's on top of my to watch list. Uh, I was asked to comment on a couple of things actually and that was one of them of course. I was going to do But yeah, so I've not actually seen that Blizzard Q&A yet. I've been so busy today, but I do want to get time to do that either tonight or tomorrow, tomorrow morning, perhaps. Um, you want your seals back, yeah. I I can, I can, could see ways. Like, if they wanted, they could easily come up with a system so that we have seals and blessings back and still fit into... I, you know, if they sat me down and gave me an afternoon even and said, look, this is our design philosophy and these are our red lines, you mustn't cross those, but you come up with a way then to have seals and blessings. I could easily come up with something, I'm sure. And, uh, but, you know, so, so uh, you know, but they, they don't want us to have them. They don't like it. 
I suppose the closest we have is, and this is changing as well, where is it now? Judgment of Light, except I don't get to use Judgment of Light, which is a shame, I was quite excited about this coming over to Rhett. And then, uh, and then I took it, I remember when uh, you know, 7.1.5 came out, I took it as a talent. And then the Holy Paladin tapped me on the shoulder and said, uh, can you not use that please? Because, you know, it overwrite, you overwrite each other's and, and the Holy Paladin was using it. And presumably generating more healing than mine would do as well. So, but that's a shame. But yeah, this has been buffed for 7.2 because it used to, well, it is as, as it is at the moment that everyone can get a maximum of one heal per second from it. Whereas now, no cooldown on it. So people can burn through if they've got rapid attacks. I t tell you what I'd like to check with this. Draft of Souls. I don't know how much healing you can get from that. I mean, it's not a massive amount of healing. Um, but yeah, I mean, that fires off four times a second, doesn't it? So... But I don't get yeah I don't get to use it. I suppose technically I could in Mythic Plus, but in Mythic Plus I tend to like my Divine Shield, uh, Divine Intervention I should say. Sorry. What path uh, are you doing with the traits in seven point two? I don't think we get much choice, do we? <coughs> but uh, I haven't yet done anything on on traits. Uh, I will, of course, have to do... I mean, for 7.2, I would anticipate having to do a, a part two Ashbringer Guide because the first part of the Ashbringer Guide will still be the same. That, nothing's changed there. But I'll have to do a part two for the new traits. And then... I don't know. Would I need a new Essentials Guide? Maybe. I'll have to see. But, uh, I, as I say, ideally, 7.2 would come out in four weeks' time. Because if it came out in four weeks time, I've got three more weeks at work. Then I get two weeks off, so that gives me a week off to, to get any new guides done and out for the release of the patch. But that's not looking likely now that we've got the thing downloaded. Uh, someone was saying to me, actually, on a comment on a video yesterday, that Blizzard have already said that it's not coming out in the next two resets, which would surprise me. But even if that's true, it doesn't mean it's not coming out on the 3rd. I don't think I don't see it being four more weeks before it's coming out if we've already downloading it now. And what was the other trait? The first trait. This is the first trait we get, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's just the one to compensate for the fact that we're giving up our twenty because we've got twenty traits at the moment that give us something nineteen and a half percent extra damage or whatever. Um, is that right? No, oh, 14 and a half. Um, and this is just a way to compensate that. I mean, it doesn't, because it's 10%. So we're still losing damage. They, we, they must be buffing us in some other way, um, folded into other abilities, I guess. See you later, Harrison. The other thing I was... Uh, so, yeah, these are some some of these, because I haven't been able to go onto the PTR too much, maybe someone in the chat knows. Uh, when 7.2 will launch and we do the artifact quest, how much can we spend, like, how many um, things can we get, traits can we get? I actually don't know yet. I will know before it comes out. Uh, but at the moment, I don't, because I've not been able to do any of that on the PTR. But I don't think we'll be able to get all of them. I think we'll be able to get some of them. Could the risk be considered better than Pride as? Um, oh, for raiding. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's a it's a safety net as well. I know some people deliberately get themselves killed to use the uh, you know the shield because of course shield of vengeance you can use offensively. I don't do that. It's not nice because you go down to one health. That's not nice and the healers. Uh, but. Preach said four traits, okay. I I'll, I mean, I'll. by the time it comes out, I will have checked all the numbers on that. Now that we're downloading it, it's going to be the time when I, I need to make time to find all this stuff out for certain um, from other people when because I haven't been able to spend the time checking it myself. But yeah, I would favour the wrists over the neck. I would sometimes use both if I'm really frightened I'm going to die, like on some Mythic Plus affixes. But uh, and some tanks that go with them, and uh, but yeah, if I if I was going to choose between the neck and the wrist for defensive purposes, I would take the wrists. So 
So you could get three traits. Um, it depends. When was... Sorry, it's in blue. It's really hard. Wessex, 89. So when you tried that on the PTR, because that's interesting, how long ago was that? Because remember, when the PTR first came out, they deliberately had the traits costing a lot more than they were, they've gone to now. Oh, yeah, five damage on the basic weapon. Yes, I'd forgotten about that. That's true. So it's worth four traits, yeah. Because I know that they changed the values as the PTR went on. They started high, and they said this, and this is obvious, uh, they started deliberately high because if you start making them too expensive and then bringing them down, everyone's happy. But if you start, if you bring them, if you have them too low, and then you make them more expensive as the PTR cycle goes on, people complain because you basically nerfed them. Even though nothing's been buffed or nerfed because it's just PTR, but that's not how people see it. What's my preferred means of keeping track of my judgment debuff? I use tell me when. Um, I have, I, I mean, when Legion first came out, I used tell me when for everything uh, because Hakili wasn't working. Now Hakili's working. I use that for most of my rotational stuff, but I still have tell me when icons for judgment, uh, buff on target, cloak buff, and, and cooldowns and various other things like that. Um, what would it take for Divine Purpose to be better than Crusade? For them to get rid of Crusade. I think Sol Sacra was saying a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was last week, that he was playing about with it and he found that using Divine Purpose and Convergence of Fates, which is actually a good trinket with Divine Purpose, he was able to do some interesting things. But even then, he was still doing less overall damage than if it had just taken Crusade. But, you know, from his point of view, he was arguing that it might be, from a utility point of view, better. Um, but... Mm, so, the I don't... Like, Crusade... The problem with Crusade, I think, is... If you nerf it down to the point where, in theory, it's the same as the others, you just wouldn't take it. Why would you take Crusade? Um, it's it's just the way it works, I think, personally. It's just either going to be too powerful or too weak to ever take. Because they tried messing about with the numbers through Alpha and Beta as well. And, and they either made it useless or too powerful. Even with the little nerf they had, they've not gone far enough. It's still 50k DPS ahead of Divine Purpose. Ah, uh, so regarding tell me when I saw your videos you use uh, on the track boss debuffs. I don't actually. Um, those are weak auras that someone else has made. I have to say though, the weak auras, it depends which videos you watch. If you watch some of my earlier kills, it's a different set of weak auras. The first set of weak auras I had I preferred because they had they put icons right in the middle of my screen. So I may use tell me when to show me some boss debuffs. I am actually going to make some of those when I get time. Uh, maybe tomorrow now you've reminded me. You can use Tell Me When to do those quite easily. You just need to know the name of the spell and you do it as a debuff tracker on you, just on the player, and put the name of it in and it works fine. Um, one Tell Me When slot, if you mean bar, then... But as I say, no, When you, if you're looking at anything that's not to do with my class, if it's anything to do with the encounter, that's a weak aura that someone else has made. I don't know, I don't make weak auras. Uh, I don't care about Holy Wrath because when you've got... I did care very much during the, the beta when they were trying to defend it. The uh, the long lost but not forgotten um, Calgan particularly. The former director of World of Warcraft. Um, but with the situation we have now is we have a talent you take for all situations. At that point it doesn't really matter what the other two are. Now granted... If they made them all so that theoretically they were all as useful as each other, then I would wish they'd get rid of Holy Wrath because I think it's bad enough that as a Paladin player, we're secretly quite pleased when people die because of the Retribution passive. To actually turn us into a kamikaze pilot in the form of Holy Wrath is just... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't see where the class fantasy comes into that. It's a nonsense. Absolute nonsense. 
I mean, you certainly didn't see Tyrion Fordring blowing himself up when Gul'dan knackered him. So no, I don't. I don't see the the benefit in that one either. Um, let's have a look. But yeah, talking about Tell Me When, because I was asked again. I have somewhere. Maybe I'll post it on the the YouTube upload of this a document, a Google Docs that had my Tell Me When profile in it. I don't think it's been updated for that long. The problem is it was. Um, I had a website. The website lapsed, and I was going to renew it. And then I thought, no, I want to do it differently again. I keep, you know, I just, I keep changing my mind on exactly what I want on the website. So that obviously it's got to be low maintenance. That's the key thing. It's got to be something I'm not going to be updating a lot. But it would be a nice way to put in links to things like that, like profiles and and profile strings and stuff like that. Um, so again, it's one of my jobs for this Easter to to look at that again. But every time I keep coming to it, loads of other things just get dumped on top of me. I'm, I'm incredibly busy at the moment. It's really weird. Like last year, there was nothing because it was like I was just developing the channel and also, you know, there's no raiding to do. You raided once a week. And now every, I'm raiding all the time. I'm recruiting, uh, which is a never-ending process, and doing everything else as well. And it's fun, but it's also there's just not enough time. Uh, question about Sims, certainly. Let's have a look. I'm going with every other rep paladin with... Divine Hammer and Fires of Justice for practically every fight in Mythic Nighthold. But you have Zeal and Bow at about a 10% 10k DPS increase. Uh, the thing is, you can't just copy the top rep Paladin passes, and there's two reasons why you can't copy them. One, they're not you. Uh, they don't have your gear, and, and, and they may be using their abilities better than you can use them as well. The second thing is, the top passes absolutely guaranteed on any night hold fight the top passers either they've got a plum um role in that fight you know because there are some jobs you can get in a fight that will help you top pass because other people other rets in other guilds are not getting to do that job and a classic example of this is like scenarios, when we killed scenarios for the first time, I I got like it was world rank two, but it was western rank one because the one who got ahead of me was one of the uh, players on an Asian server where it's a different game really, and the reason for that was pure and simple that I had the job of staying on the boss. Our strategy was to burn the boss very very quickly so that we didn't get the, the multiple like waves of ads, which meant that at the end of the fight it was a quicker fight, so that obviously helps. And because I was on the boss 100% of the time, not having to move between boss and ads, that put me at a massive advantage over most of the rest in the world. So it was quite easy to beat them on damage. Whereas another fight where I'm just doing the same thing that other rets would do, I'm not going to pass that highly. It's obvious. But the other reason why you shouldn't look at that is because even if they're not given a plum roll... They'll just be deliberate. It'll be like on Tychondrius, for example. Classic case. On Tychondrius, the ones who are passing top will be using their cooldowns on the bats and those guilds will be keeping the bloods at the boss so you can aoe them before they deal with them. they don't deal with them straight away they just stack them up i'm not saying stack and stack and stack because that'd be mad but they stack a couple of loads of them on the boss you can and and people will just be cleaving divine storm and all the rest of it because their guild has enough damage to do that to cheese the stuff and still kill the boss and you're not in that position uh so I wouldn't worry too much about that. So, yeah, don't look at the top passers. You know, SimCraft... I mean, SimCraft is not necessarily 100% because it's just a model written by people who don't actually write the code in the game. So they're basing it on... They're very clever people, but they're basing it on the data that they have. And sometimes it needs refining. But if you're looking at passers, you're looking at totally... It's apples and pears. Um... Or even more different than that. Apples and bananas, I will actually suggest. Ah, the thing with Croesus, what I noticed is... I mean, my best pass was probably... Actually, no, it's probably the last one, but that's because i got more gear now. But the first one's certainly better than the second. And the reason is this, because I, when we were progressing on it, my damage was not really good enough. And the, the reason for that, ultimately, I looked at it and thought, well, I know the reason for this. It's because when we've gone to the burning pitch, first of all, I've gone out early to get back to want to soak. So there's DPS off the boss then. 
Secondly, once we've done the soaking, I'm moving from add to add to kill them all before I go back to the boss. Now the ones who get the better passes, they move out at the last split second, so they're still on the boss all the time. As soon as they've soaked, they move to the boss. If there's any ads in the way, they will DPS them on the way, but they move straight back to the boss and straight back on the boss. Now, if you can do that, because everyone's managing the soaking properly and the ad killing, and, and you, you can just cleave the ads at the boss and that's fine, then that's great. That's not generally how it works in my guild. So the, the damage tends not to be as good as a consequence of that because I spend too much time on the ads not getting back to the boss. So you have to sort of judge it that. I mean, it's one of those things, you can't just look at a low pass and, and say, well, it's because of this, this and this and hide behind it if you actually aren't doing well enough. But at the same time, you have to also understand there are reasons. Um, you know, percentiles like logs and damage meters they're not of Blizzard's invention. They're not a part of the game. They're a, a third party thing. The logs are really useful. Damage meters are really useful. But, you know, when you're looking at overall damage or you're looking at ranks and stuff like that, you're not comparing like for like. And you have to sort of see what you need to do. And it's not necessarily mean that you're going to do most overall damage. See you later, Beans. Uh, in terms of, I'm going to, you did have a second point here. Um, convergence of fate seems to be either perfect and uh, sometimes yeah um, yeah if you have convergence of fates of course you have a decent chance of getting a fourth crusade in so you sort of want to be using it off cooldown you don't want to be delaying it so yeah I, I can't really speak for that exactly because I mean I could look at someone's logs that has it and that's what I would suggest like if you're going to look at top logs for use of convergence of fate, sure, uh, but but look at that timing of it. But you also have to look at the replay and see what they're doing. Um, did I watch Preacher's video on the reasons behind Mythic Burnout yet? No, I don't. I've there's like multiple videos I want to watch this weekend that are on my watch list, and I haven't watched, been able to watch them yet. I've been really busy. Um, the, you're, you're not the first, unless you are the same person that asked me earlier today. Uh, not the first person to ask about that. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, the first video I need to watch is Blizzard's recent q and I still haven't watched that. I need to watch that and do a video on that. Um, I will probably watch that one uh, by Preach as well. Um, but I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Tomorrow morning would probably be a good chance. Generally, Sunday mornings I get up, go down, have make myself a nice breakfast and easily watch a few things on YouTube. And that will probably be a good time to do that. But I haven't yet. So I don't know what the main points of that are. I know it came out a few days ago because someone linked it in Guild as well. Um, obviously, I have my own thoughts on Mythic Burnout, and I think it's, I think Artifact Power Grind is ultimately the answer. So I, I don't know if he said anything different to that. Um, you know, you could spend twenty-five minutes basically saying AP Grind. I don't know. Yeah, sorry, you can't link. If you're trying to link something, it doesn't work. How accurate is a SimCraft port? Like, like I've said, uh, yeah, SimCraft is a model. Uh, it's not made by Blizzard. It's made by players who have to gather information. They have to gather logs and data and, and get people during testing to beat up on a dummy for hours on end uh, and test all the things they can. And then they come up with a mathematical model and put it together. And again, even the parameters, like when you look at SimCraft, people say, how could it SimCraft? The people who put SimCraft together, again, they come up with this model. It might not be perfect. It'll be pretty good. They're very good people, uh, very dedicated and quite intelligent as well, which helps. The second point, though, is you have to set the parameters to match the fight. Like if you're trying to see how you're going to do on, I don't know, something like Spellblade or L'Oreal. And you're doing, you're simming yourself, but you're simming yourself with a patchwork fight. It's not all that great because it's not. It's much more of a beast lord fight. So uh, you have to sort of also set your parameters. And all that might mean time as well. Maybe it's a very quick fight. Maybe it's a very long fight. And you need to adjust the fight duration. But if you can do all those things, it's pretty good. It is pretty good. Uh, pawn is just all pawn does is it times it multiplies two numbers together. You tell it your stat weights, and it multiplies that by the stats on the piece of gear that you're looking at. That's all it does. 
So, and the stat weights, again, stat weights change. Again, you can get those from SimCraft, but you have to simulate the right thing. Like, uh, your value for mastery will vary depending on how much DPS is a single target and how much is cleave, how much is massive AoE and all the rest of it. So, and you have to sort of understand that as well. So I got really itchy nose. Um, so you've only just started playing since Legion, okay. Um, we have... We've just had, I had a really weird comment on a video today. And, uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter about that. But we've just had a Shadow Priest join us who's only just started playing, um, around about October ish. So after Le Legion already been out a good six weeks, and they're very good already. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, well, that's the thing, isn't it? It's, um, YouTube's really good for just going on and just find you can find pretty much anything you want, can't you? And it does help. I I do sometimes think because I've played in every expansion, I know I had a sizable break that meant I basically missed out on most of Wrath and Cataclysm raiding. Although I did raid in both of them as well, but I've raided like all the tiers in all the other expansions as well. And I cut and I've so I've seen changes happen incrementally, and I've been able to adapt quite easily because it's always been a fairly small change. I can't imagine what it must be like for people completely new to the game. I cannot imagine. Uh, let's have a look. I've got 890 faulty countermeasure, 880 converted to face, 920 draft. I'm not actually sure you are that lucky. I got a 900 draft from my first uh, Nighthold cash when Nighthold first came out. And it was it looked bis for me for about half an hour before I then got an 875 Horn of Valor. And I haven't used it since. Um, so I don't know that you are that lucky to have a 920 draft because it sounds like it'd be high enough item level to maybe you should use it but I wouldn't like using it I don't like the concept of the trinket um, yes kill times do matter a lot they, they can change things a lot so with your sims you want to be trying to model that kill time as well as you can And it is, yeah, if you've got a guild that's not very consistent, yes, that that can change things as well. It's just, that's just the, that's just unfortunate. Uh, Odin Trickett, stat sticks in general are pretty safe bets. I have, as I say, a crit strength stat stick from Odin, which I have used ever since I got it. So I've been using that for months now. Uh, it's just a safe, safe bet. We're going to get another one on the Broken Shore as well, aren't we? There's There's another one coming becoming available in uh, 7.2. They're, they're just solid. They just do what they do. There's nothing, you know, they don't fail you. It's nice and consistent. And they're pretty good for what they are. Hi, Jordan. And um, so, yeah, they're, they're always, they're just a safe bet. Haste one, yeah. Uh, I mean, it depends what, what sort of sim invest at the moment. Crit is always... Crit, crit and haste are always fairly safe ones. Fifteen extra. What's the fifth? What, Fifteen extra seconds. You're not going to get fifteen extra seconds. Altogether, you do, I suppose. But you've got the three surely in the bank already. Get an extra seven and a half seconds. Do you mean he's not giving you relics with Rash of the Wrath of the Ashbringer on them? Is that what you mean? Send them to me. I'll tell them. Um, Paladin slow move to speed. Why? Ah, well, Seth is a secret. Is the secret, even though I don't use it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily suggest Cavalier as a talent if it's bad affixes though. Yeah, ca yeah, Cavalier is not going to help that much. It depends who else is with you, but a lot of people, the people I tend to run with are like, fortunately, one of the people I tend to run with is is a druid who can sometimes use his like travel form thing. So I hitch a lift on that. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, Cavalier is fine if the trash is fine. Like, if the trash has any dodgy affixes, which mean either your tank might drop dead. Or just you might take stupid amounts of damage. I, I would just stick with Divine Intervention. It's so much safer. Maybe even the wrists if you really don't trust your tank to stay alive. 
So speed issue is a class, right? So I don't think my opinions really changed. Like through most of alpha and beta, we had no baseline movement speed at all. That was horrendous. That was bad. Now they gave us one in the form of divine steed. That used to be a talent. At that point, I think it's okay. I don't think everyone has to have equal speed. Uh, to, I, I think, and I think we have a way of compensating in the form of potentially the legendary boots. I mean, not everyone has it. I don't have them. I'm quite pleased about that, by the way. Uh, the legendary boots. But the legendary boots, of course, are going to get better. Where is it again? I've lost it. I had a picture of them. Uh, is it on this world? No, not that one. Not that one. So the legendary boots in 7.2, uh, you're going to gain like some additional crit. Okay. Um, so you, you're going to get some extra benefit from that. Uh, and then obviously Cephas a secret, which is going to give us a flat movement increase speed. So you'd be able to use that as well. Have I seen the Fire Avenging Wrath Relic in, in Tomb of Sargos? Yes, I have. But as I say, it's uh, it's going to be needed because at some point, like the, the only reason I still have the Xavius Fire Relic equipped at the moment is because Fire Relics are not really dropping in Nighthold. It like dropped once, like a good high item level that I would replace my Wrath of the Ashbringer with and other people want it as well and I just sort of passed it. Um, but... Yeah, I, I'm going to look forward to that. But then the problem when that comes in, I don't think there's any holy ones. So I'll be like gaining a fire one and losing two holy ones. I just, we're not going to win. We're not going to win. Uh, unless we get lucky. Do I ever run Mythic Plus for people watching you on my channel? I don't... I, I started streaming a little bit a while ago. And then I sort of stopped. There was a couple of reasons for that. It's not to say that I'll permanently stop. But one thing was... As soon as people finished the Artifact Power Grind, it used to be the case, if I logged on a Friday night, people would be poking me to join a Mythic Plus dungeon run. So it would be relatively straightforward to do that. Now we hardly get anyone online at the weekends because people have finished. When you talk before about burnt out and raiding because that AP grind, people are, were sick of it. Even in my guild, they're not burnt out and stopped playing the game, but they've stopped coming online because people, people were online uh, and now they're not. And the other thing is uh, that, like, sometimes we end up having discussions that are sort of confidential, like, as an officer. And I need a way of being able to sort of speak and have myself heard without you hearing. And someone put on something like a virtual thing that, that's where you could cut out some of the sound so that you'd be able to hear what I said or, or something like that. I don't know. Um, but until I've got something like that, then I feel a little bit dodgy about streaming. It's not, it's not to say that I won't. It's just... And I don't necessarily know what I'll be able to do. I mean, maybe I should just start doing some streaming on like Friday evenings or something, but just on my alt or something like that, because there'll be no bugger online. I won't be doing anything. Um, the boots are funny. Yeah, I don't have the boots. But they'll be a lot better when, as I say, the, the 10.2 comes out. Do I see the Bist Legendaries for Retribution Paladins changing at all? I don't yet, but I'm... I'm not going to say I'm expert enough at the moment to be able to say. The only thing I would say when you're talking about cloak and belt is potentially you would say belt and Liadrin's Fury Unleashed. Remember, the reason for that is that it would allow you to use the four set and a two set at the same time. Whereas the cloak won't let you do that. So you will actually gain, and I think I'm right in saying this, you'll gain from using a four set and a two set and using Liadrin's Fury and Chain of Throne over using the Whisper of Nathrezim and not getting a two and a four set. Would I use a second ret as a guild? Yes. I kept, I said to Fardion, I'd be more than willing to accept him because his guild's done something. I don't know. So he can join. In general, though, I have not put that I'm looking for rets on the thing. The main reason being that our melee, we have a decent, we can afford another melee, in the roster, we could probably afford another two, if we're honest, because it's not a melee unfriendly tier. In fact, I was having another argument with the ranged DPS. They kept accusing us of not needing to do mechanics. Um, it's funny how they're the first to moan when melee cock up a mechanic. But anyway, what we really need is ranged DPS. Uh, I we we don't have enough ranged DPS, or they're not like 
reliable enough. Our melee are pretty reliable. Uh, at least in terms of turning up. Not necessarily in terms of doing what I bloody well say. But yeah, in terms of going back to the thing of my movement speed. I'm okay with our movement. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm sort of okay with it. It is annoying in Mythic Plus. But that, maybe that's my fault. Maybe I should use Seth as a secret more often. Mythic Plus coming to Karazhan. Yeah, a lot of people are happy about that. I'm not. I don't, I'm not keen on Karazhan. The new Karazhan. I don't like it. Um, Eye of Command. Yeah, the fact that we'll be able to get a high item level Eye of Command is going to be a bonus, obviously. Um, ah, Star Ogre. Is it all? Is I have command all that great on Star Ogre? Not mythic. I would. I would argue not mythic. There are a number of times when you have to move away from the boss, so I can see sta uh, stacks resetting quite a lot, and the desire to not let those stacks drop can make you make mistakes as well and wipe the raid. So I don't. I mean, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I and I don't have I have command. But I don't see it being a great trinket for Mythic Star Orga. Trilliax, maybe. But you still you should really switch to the ad when the ad comes up and focus that cleave sure onto the boss, but not from the boss. Or I would say anyway. Um and then what other one? Croesus. Again, you ruin out for burning pitch, ruin out for the bridge shattering. Surely you drop your stacks at those. I don't know, but I would have thought you'd drop your stacks at those point. So, Eye of Command is not as great. I don't think it's all that great. Yeah, the Odin Trinket is very, very good if you can get... Obviously, it's going to become less good. Unless you're looking, you got yourself a very high Titan Forge one. Um, because... But there'll be new stat sticks. I'll say there's new stat sticks coming in 7.2 that'll be high, that you'll be able to get a higher item level. Um, Crusade doesn't already passively increase movement speed really unless of course you have the boots and it's taking your haste so it will then because you're, if, you, if you look at the boots uh, movement speed equal to 75% of whichever is your highest stat and if you've got on the high stacks of Crusade it's a safe bet haste is your highest stat um, so yeah, if you have the boots, then Crusade will increase your movement speed. Trinket of Croesus, that is an interesting question. It's, <laughs> if you got it at a really high item, look, the, the irony is a couple of weeks ago, we had a 925 one drop. Now I didn't take it, and then I thought about it later, and I simmed it later, and I thought, actually it would have been better than what I have. But that's because it's so it was 50 item levels above what I would have replaced. Now, I did cover that in the I actually mentioned it in the trinket. I did a trinkets video a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, maybe. And I did cover that one. I included all the Nighthold trinkets as well as a few others that I chose to as well. Um, it's all if you can get it a high item level, yes, you could certainly use it if you didn't have all the better ones. But on parity in terms of item level, it's not great. But it's not disastrous. The Nightmare Eggshell. Yeah, stacking. Anything that procs haste, I don't like. Because you it is jarring. Because haste has such an effect on our rotation, if your haste suddenly goes up or down during a fight, and not reliably, like Crusade is predictable, you get used to that. But if it's just random... Uh, it'd be very jarring. I don't like it at all. I don't like that. And I never have. So anything that can proc haste, I steer well clear of personally. Uh, would you recommend for gearing as a fairly casual player, not in a guild, currently item level 845? Well, there's various things you could do. You could uh, you spam everything you can that will give Bloods of Sargeras and then get yourself some... What I would do is I wouldn't automatically get crafted gear and then bung it up i mean i've got i've got uh my out like my hunter i only just leveled that relatively recently and it's already like eight seven five item level and it's just from doing lfr and stuff like that and sneaking into the odd normal mode when i can uh, which you may not be able to do 
Uh, I've only been able to do it on the back of other people who've just let me in without asking too many questions because, of course, I've got like mythic raiding titles. But um, I would definitely say make sure you're running your LFR and stuff like that. Make sure you're using your coins on them, on the key bosses. But also, uh, yeah, when you've geared up a little bit, get some crafted gear and look at how many Obliterum you can get in Broods of Sargeras and work out and just upgrade a couple of them. Like the trinket will be decent. If you're at 845 item level, the crafted trinket will be good. And there'll be a couple. And the other advantage of getting the crafted gear is you can have whatever stats you want on it. So you can go for things that have got like crit haste or something like that. So that's what I would do. Obviously, what you ideally want to do is to be getting into normal mode runs, preferably as part of a guild. Uh, a lot of people using Divine Hammer, Fires of Justice for every boss, yes. Uh, even without the cloak. Yeah, even without the cloak. The thing is, if you use Divine Hammer, because that's the slower Blade of Justice, you sort of want Fires of Justice to balance it out, even if you're not using the cloak. Um, so it's that, that's why it's increasingly common that people use Fires of Justice, regardless of whether they have the cloak or not. I wouldn't say Hectic Ad Cleave is the best for a lot of Nighthold bosses, unless your tanks are on crack. Um, but Beast Lord is decent, or light movement type things. Because if you have it on Hectic Ad Cleave, I can well believe that Zeal's going to sim higher than it probably should for most Nighthold bosses. The other thing you have to bear in mind on some Nighthold bosses, the cleave damage from Zeal is going to be useless damage. There are some things that will cleave onto it's useless. Like uh, Tychondrius, if it's cleaving onto the bloods when you're on the boss, useless damage. On Botanist, if it's cleaving onto the other forms of the Botanist, useless damage. Um, damage that doesn't even show up on logs. It shows up in your damage meter, but it doesn't show up on logs. So there's a few fights like that. Um, and also, whenever, you, whenever you're talking about a situation where there's movement and cleave at the same time, the sim is going to not match it really perfectly because it's a very difficult thing to model because it's so unpredictable um, let's have a look the belt and if you're talking about ring as in Liadrian's Fury Unleashed I mean that's a decent I'd say I had that for a long time and that's very decent and the fact it, the other thing though is having the belt and the ring at the same time, which of course both work with Crusade, it means you've got to nail your Crusade. You've got to absolutely get the best out of your Crusade. Because otherwise you, you, you suffer twice. Um, I don't, about rec, what do I recommend as the haste that should be with a legendary cloak? I would advise against thinking about a, leg, a number. Because you'll probably, like if I say 30% and you go for that, at the exclusion of everything else, you'll just end up weaker because you'll be going for it when you shouldn't be. Um, I would just say, you know, sim stuff, get stat weights and, uh, and just go with whatever is an upgrade for you and let your haste be what it is. Like mine, I would be delighted if I could have 30% haste, but I can't without sacrificing overall damage so i stick at about 25 which is what it is but i don't have it's not good to have a number in mind um like there's been previous expansions where you did want to get to a certain number it's not really the case now let's have a look in my zero was simming 10k for both patchwork and beast lord yeah i mean 10k higher in the grand scheme of things is not huge if you're really uncomfortable using it then you don't if you are comfortable using it though then sure use it and see how it goes yeah Liadrin's Fury well you say it's amazing it used to be amazing when it was two and a half seconds now it's four seconds it's less amazing um, but it's still very good and the only reason I stopped using it is because I got the belt which is better uh Yeah, uh, so about the guides, there are times passing what to do on, on other stuff. Uh, I do think about this sometimes. Like, sometimes I'll look at an older video and I'll think, still relevant, but maybe I should update it. I don't think, I mean, the add ons one have been updated for Legion, I think. I think, I think uh, sure they have. Um, so I either did all my add ons video just before Legion came out, so with Legion very much in mind, or just after it. So I think they're still relevant, but there are some videos where I look back and think, 
maybe I should redo them. I don't know to what point I should just keep repeating videos every year or two um, just because, you know, something may have changed. Um, Divine Hammer on Croesus, yeah. The reason I use Divine Hammer on Croesus is because of ads. Sometimes it's it's quite sticky between an ad blowing up and dying. And you want to cleave onto the boss as well because that's also a tight DPS check. And you lose almost no damage taking Divine Hammer compared with, say, Blade of Wrath, even on single target. Do another video for seven points. On what? Sorry, hold on. Uh, tier bonus generate holy power a lot when you use Crusade and Legends get next. I will be doing other videos for seven point two. Which one do you? Mean? Oh, Elf UI. Well, we'll see. I'll I'll look back at my the, my current one and see if it does need updating. I'm sure I'll have plenty to do for seven point two. Wake of Ashes is an opener. Ooh, I don't. Um. I mean, it's, I suppose, you know, what I would do then, if you're, whatever you're using as an opener, is go on to, you look at your logs, go to resources, one of the things along those resources, and click Holy Power, and just use it for the period of time when Crusade is up. So don't do it for the whole fight, but just when Crusade is up. And just check that you're not wasting any Holy Power. If you're not wasting any Holy Power during Crusade, then there's nothing wrong with your rotation. But if you are, you might sort of want to consider changing it. I certainly didn't open with Wake of Ashes very often. There were a couple of times when I did. It was very unusual for me to do that. Well, if, I'm, I assume you're talking about for the first one, when the fight just starts, by the way. You certainly wouldn't do it on a later one because you'd build up first before you use Crusade. Uh, which add-on do I use to display party and raid frames? LVI. All the add-ons that I use are in my add-ons playlist on the channel, possibly with the exception of Wii Chorus, but that's because although I use Wii Chorus, I don't make them. Other people do. What food buff? At the moment, I'm using crit food, but it's a bit of a changeable thing. Um, no, I'm using the crit one at the moment. That's sort of simming highest for me. The I was using Fish Brawl Special for a while, but that doesn't seem to do as much damage now as it did. Do I get to 15 stacks? I can't remember. I get there as quickly as I can. What I tend to do, if I've got Divine Hammer, is about three and a half seconds before the pull, I activate Divine Hammer, then a second before the pull, pre-pot, and then I go in, Crusader Strike, Judge, start spending, I can use another Divine Hammer and spend and stuff like that. It gets up pretty rapidly, um, because it, gets to, it means you get to use your Divine Hammer quite soon into the fight, after as well as getting the two holy power from just basically touching the boss. So you can build up, ironically, you can build up a little bit quicker with Divine Hammer, technically. Old War is still currently our best potion, yes. I suppose in an all-out AoE situation, prolonged power would be better. So, you know, uh, you can... I mean, I was starting, when we first started Nighthold, uh, using Old War on Scorperon for the pre-part, but then using prolonged power later on, because then with adds up for my second use of Crusade. So for AoE, prolonged power will do better. As long as it is AoE, from, if it's like just a quick burst of AoE that's over in three seconds, then there's no point. Um, but yeah, if it's if it's a proper AoE phase. So like a Spellblade Allurial, for example, uh, the second use of Crusade usually coincides with like frost ads or something like that does it you can make them coincide with ads anyway um so and i think the next one can be with fire ads potentially although you don't usually cleave too much on those they want to be a bit spread out but if you're going to have proper aoe so yeah it could be on some fights that you pre-pot with like old war and use prolonged power if it's going to be aoe when the next time you use it uh that would be fine I just tend to use Old War all the time because the focus tends to be on like a boss or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, preemptive Divine Hammer. If you've got Divine Hammer, you do want to use it preemptively. 
and yeah, judge the advantage with judge because uh, that's another thing. Like you might vary slightly from the APL that being like SimCraft or something, simply because you're having to move into a boss. So obviously you want to use things that can be used before you get there. Blade of Justice, I mean, even if you're not using Divine Hammer, Blade of Justice, of course, being slightly ranged is also a good one to use first. Normally you would use Crusader, if you were stood at a thing and then just started attacking it like a training dummy, you would use Crusader Strike before Blade of Justice, but because Blade of Justice can be used as you run in, then you use that. Ah, if you hoard, of course, you've got Arcane Torrent to use as well. What do I hate about Wreck currently? Utility. It's always utility. Uh, I don't go on about it as much just because it's not. I'm not suffering from it at the moment. But I've always Paladins have always been a utility class. And although I understand that in Legion they wanted to get rid of a lot of utility abilities, other I'm not saying we don't have any. You know, the fact that we have Bubble and Blessing of Protection and Blessing of Freedom even means that we have a limited amount. But I'm talking about this sort of utility that will be useful on every fight. Because Paladins should always have that. We should always have that sort of thing. Um, and I can understand they... Well, mind you, I, so, I semi-understand it. It's like, okay, it looks like they don't want anyone to have a raid cooldown because that's now for healers. But Warriors get one. Um, so you either take it off everyone or Paladins should have something. And, and don't talk to me about Greater Blessings. No. So that's pretty much it. If I if I have any gripe about Retribution Paladins, it is simply the utility. It's nothing to do with damage. That's sort of fine. I mean, if I get rid of that. Um, you know, this is for the 50th percentile. It's sort of middling. It's not great and it's not bad. It's all right. And but Cusselfoot, that's overall damage. In terms of our ability to burst priority targets, which can include bosses at key phases, we're pretty good, uh, even though our single target is not amazing. But when we're bursting with Crusade, everything's amazing. Uh, what is something about any older version of Retribution Paladins that you miss? Hammer of Wrath and useful blessings. Seals. I was never a fan of the seals because seals have always been bad. But the idea of seals can be made to work. They just never have, in my opinion. Um, what's my favourite Legion bit for Retribution? Nothing new about the Retribution spec I like, I have to say. That's not to say I'm negative about it. The overall package is fine. It's just that I don't like anything that we've got from it. Because we didn't get very much from it to, to like in the first place. Like, what have we actually got? Uh, we got a Blade of Justice as a replacement for Exorcism. And we have a situation where we secretly wish people would die when we've got Crusade active. That's not a really positive thing. So I don't actually see anything really good. So I don't have anything, if I'm honest, uh, that's my favourite bit for Retribution. Other than the fact that we now have the Ashbringer. But everyone has the Ashbringer, so it's not special anymore. <laughs> um, five Holy Parts start Crusade, then start spending. It's not, no. I mean, if you ever if you ever get told something's a DPS loss, look at logs, look at parsers. If you look at the top parsers on any boss, and then you look at the cast sequence for the first 10, 15 seconds, you'll see quite a lot of variety from people who are getting world rank, you know, world one to whatever, because they, they cycle around so frequently anyway. There is no opener that is guaranteed the best. There's what's best for you and the situation and the way you start the fight. The key thing is that you don't waste holy power. At how many targets do we stop casting judgment and push holy power for the next divine storm? Um, it's not a case of always. Like in a tech, I mean, I sometimes do just out of habit. In a trash situation on Mythic Plus, then you there's no point. Like, even on, like, four mobs, you could potentially argue three. But on four mobs or more, you probably should just keep pushing for the more Divine Storms. 
And if you've got a huge pack, then definitely judgment's pointless. Uh, unless there's a key target within that pack that also wants to die, I guess. But again, it depends on your mastery, doesn't it? Like my mastery is about 19 to 20%. So I'm not doing a huge amount of extra damage uh, with it. I'm, I'm going to miss out on 40% basically of a divine storm if I don't judge uh, because for two targets. So for four, certainly for five mobs and stuff like that. But another th good thing about Judgment is because it's ranged, you can use it as you're running into a, a pack. So before you can use anything else, Judge, and then as you get closer, Divine Storm, because it's got the 20-yard range. Make sure that you're definitely within that 20 yards, though. Outside of Crusade, you can always try and game. Um, yeah, generally, yeah. Build. when If you can build, build outside of Crusade, uh, even up to five. What do I think about Blessing of Wisdom? I think I have one healer who asks for it. So that's what I think about it. There's one person in my guild who appreciates it. Oh, resetting it. Yeah, if they, you have to get used to that. You get used to it. Like Mythic Plus as well, it's a thing. If you, like, every time you go into a new dungeon, you have to keep putting it on people because uh, it will have, if you move any distance away from them, it drops off. But at least it's not as bad. Because we were constantly having to change it when people kept changing talents and shit like that. Uh, Night Elf Paladin Order Hall roster. Uh, my thoughts on Night Elf Paladins. Well, I have nothing particularly against the idea of Night Elf Paladins. My only concern is that when you start, I mean, we've got Night Elf Majors, which shouldn't be a thing. Once you start abandoning law for the sake of increasing the number of classes available to play a spec, you open the way for known paladins, which must never happen. The other thing is, you can understand why they made Torrens paladins. I don't agree with it, but you can understand it. Because Horde only had one option. And even Blood Elves, they had to change the law to make even that fit. Um... Alliance have got three races where it makes perfect sense for them to be paladins. Like, no one's got an issue with Drenai, Dwarf, or Human Paladins. So there doesn't need to be another choice. So I don't see why there would need to be a Night Elf Paladin. But the fact, as you quite rightly say, that we now have one does open the door, potentially. Um, hmm. Why don't I like talking about PvP? Because I don't know anything about it. I don't like to talk from a position of ignorance. I don't PvP. It's not that I don't like PvP in some games. I don't like it in this game. I think it's awful. I've played PvP in Warhammer Online. That was really good. I've played PvP in Elder Scrolls Online. That was really good. I've played it in this game and it's dreadful. Dreadful. Pandaren Paladins. No. No. I mean, really, we shouldn't have Paladins from any of the hippie races. Like... You know, Night Elves and Pandar, and shouldn't really. But anything is preferable to Gnome. Um, yeah, I mean, analysing logs. Like, if people send them in, and I see them, like, I, I, you know, someone might then turn around and say, well, I sent some logs and you didn't see them. I don't, if you email it into me, I've got a much better chance of seeing it. I, I can't describe how many comments I get sent, and I haven't got the time, unfortunately, to read them all. Uh, and I don't know how people, like... I understand like full-time YouTubers with hundreds of thousands of subscribers will probably have someone else, a friend or a partner, who takes care of reading emails and stuff like that. I don't understand how even they can do it with that many because the amount I get is like... Um, I get to read most of the comments, but once anything with a link on it, as I say, as a message, will just go into a spam folder. And I very rarely read those because most of them are spam and I don't need to read them. It's just people trying to plug their own channel or something like that. You know the comments you get. You sort of get, oh, your channel's really great. Yeah, it's fantastic. I've subscribed. Oh, by the way, do you want to subscribe to my channel? Mm, yes. Um, do I like that Paladins have separate self-heal attack to press over casting instant flash of light? Oh, the flash of light. I, I quite liked the flash of light procs. The only downside was that in WAD they, went, they became useless. They were good in MOP. In MOP, that talent was useful. 
And then in Wad, it was so piss poor weak that I didn't. It wasn't even worth the global cooldown. Um, Shaman, I, I'd be quite. I'd be up for Warlock tanks. Shaman tanks is a funny one. Do you know what? When the game first came out on the website, Blizzard actually described Shamans as being able to tank. And it's not that they could in Vanilla either. They, they, they were even worse than Paladins at it. Why do I think they made draft the way it is? I don't know. I think whoever did it plays a warrior, though. <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, the route. Ah, well, I mean, you've got to have some disadvantage for it, I suppose. Uh, it's quite funny as well. Because where it naturally lines up, you sort of want to use it when Crotus is about to smash the bridge. Yeah, detailed video on how to read. I mean, there's, you wouldn't believe it. I was yesterday... Um, I had a few spare moments during lunchtime at work and I typed out a list of the videos I sort of wanted to get done this weekend and there was like 30 of them. Now, that's not happening. Uh, so there's always this list and it, and the priority is always changing. There's always videos I end up not doing because like, there's different types of video. I always sort of split them into three basic categories. There's what I call archive. These are videos I can do at any time, so they go to the bottom of the list because I could do those in a year and it would be just as relevant. There are ones that I like, uh, fairly timely ones, where you don't have to do it right now. You could do it in a couple of weeks or something, but you don't want to leave it a few... If you leave it a few months, then there is no point in then doing it. Uh, and then there's ones that if you're going to do it, you need to do it now. Uh, and obviously they're top priority. So there's a lot of things just like... Something like... Uh, a detailed one on using Warcraft logs. Really good idea, but you can sort of see because of the nature of it, it ends up getting pushed down in the priority list. Um, yeah, I do do video analyze logs. If I get a request and I can see the request. So email is the best way. I do apologize if I ever miss anyone's messages, but I just get so many. It's, it's I get loads. Um, but I'm perfectly happy to do a video. Especially, I mean, someone, the best one I did was someone who not only sent me the logs in, but also a video of their gameplay uh, sent to me. That's also really good as well, because you can see lots of things then. Uh, let's have a look. Do you think it's a good idea to replace Holy Wrath with the old talent on Cataclysm Zealotry? Um, maybe. Yeah, I, I, I only played Cataclysm really for Dragon Soul. Zealotry was was decent, um, but I don't think it would fit in the form it had now. It would it wouldn't fit now, would it? Because especially in seven point two, we're gonna or seven when Tomb of Sargeras comes out, we're gonna have so many ways of generating holy power really quickly, that too quickly. In fact, I just look at the wastage we're gonna get. So I'm not sure that that would fit now. Um, but in concept, yeah, I quite liked that one. The Ask Mr. Robot, yeah, you'll notice, or you may not have noticed, I, when the Ask Mr. Robot simulator has been worked on, I was invited onto the, the beta of it before they sort of announced it, and, and I was really positive about it to begin with because the concept of it is brilliant. It's a nice, user-friendly simulator with lots of features in it that are really easy to do. The problem is that it's inaccurate. So I had intended like when Legion came out, to do a video guide on it. Because I've done video guides on SimCraft, obviously. I had intended to do one on the Ask Mr. Robot Simulator. But it gets too many things wrong. And I don't get that. Uh, I do have a Patreon. I don't really plug it too much. Um, but I, I do have one. Unsurprisingly, it's Theet on there. You apply to my guild. Hmm. I did threaten them actually on Thursday with I'm going to fill the guild up with retribution paladins. But if I'm honest, if I'm honest, um, there are things we sort of want and, and another retribution paladin isn't really one. But obviously anything exceptional we would take, especially now, because at the moment I do need to, like I'm, I'm, I've am i sunk so low, I am, I am probably going to recruit a gnome tonight. I am almost certain to recruit a gnome as soon as I've got off here. Uh, that's how desperate we've got. Because uh, we're so, on such a skeleton crew at the moment. We don't have enough. We've got like 22 in the roster. And there's also a tank that's going to leave soon that we need to replace. 
and uh, also a maid that's going to leave soon that we need to replace as well. So, but it's range DPS that we really want. Um, do we know the tier 20 bonuses for Ret? Yes, yes, we do. Um, there they are. So, Divine Hammer Blade of Justice generates one additional holy power. So, that's going to be generating three now, which is annoying. And Judgment also. So, oh, it's just so annoying. Judgment also increases the damage of Divine Hammer Stroke Blade of Justice. So, all about the Blade of Justice. As well as a. Well, anyway, whatever. Yeah, as well as one of the traits on the Ashbringer. Uh, why they don't replace Holy Wrath? Because they put so much store. Well, I, I'm okay. I don't know them personally. Soul Sacra would be the best person to ask, really, I suppose. But I reckon it's because they defended it so strongly during Alpha. It was being attacked. In fact, I had Celestalon proper rage at me. Um, on the was that? Well, he raged on me, at me a couple of times. But certainly, the I'm pretty sure the Holy Wrath one was one. The Greater Blessings was another one. Um, but yeah, Holy Wrath was uh, was one. They really. They they basically planted their feet in the ground that on that one. <laughs> yeah, um sorry John. people who enjoy simming and enjoy and getting personal stat weights, many people who hate it. I I understand them. I can well understand why they would hate it. But it is the nature of a game like this that is ultimately you you need to mathematically model certain things if you want to get the very best out of it. Now, you you do have to sort of come come from this point of view as well. Like you have to think about the sort of raiding you're doing. If you are pushing progress mythic raiding, you sort of really ought to do it. If you're not, then it's not that important. I mean, don't make hideously bad decisions with gear, but you're not going to go massively wrong as long as you put a bit of common sense into it but I can well understand why people would hate to do it because it's weird that you would have to do it I mean I surprise people at work all the time when they occasionally ask me about the game and when I have to explain all the sort of statistical analysis and mathematical modeling that is done to be able to play it well it's like really weird they don't get it or well, they do get it you know what I mean they think it's weird they, they, it's, they, it surprises them uh, four pieces, yeah. I'm well. I'm not impressed by any of them, but we would use the four piece. We would use the four piece of this and the two piece of tier nineteen over the other way around. Is the way as I understand it, it Sims. Um, is there a scenario that would replace Liadrin's Fury or Whispers if you also have Kill Jaden's Trinket? Maybe if on Scorperon, if you wanted to rank, except of course, oh dear, they've been removed from the All Stars ranks. So it won't do you that much good. Um, but in terms of realistic situations, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Have I watched Preacher's video on Mythic Raid? No, I've been asked this a few times. Uh, I haven't yet. I haven't yet, no. Uh, there are. I have a list of videos I want to watch this weekend. Uh, no problem. So we're coming towards two hours. I never do more than two hours at a time, by the way, because, you know, I like to uh, to model a good thing and you shouldn't be sat at a computer for more than two hours. Even if you do have a nice drink. I have my I have a blue glass today. I usually have a pink glass for Paladins, but it's in the wash at the moment. But I do, I do have pink lemonade to make up for it. Uh, more subs. Oh, it's a funny one. I'm doing a subscriber report tomorrow, which I haven't done for a while. I'm not quite ready for it, actually, so I'm, I'm going to have to only talk about a few things. Uh, but it's a tricky thing. It's, it's Obviously, having content that people appreciate is good for getting subs, but there's so many things to it, and I don't do a lot of the things well enough. Uh, largely, I like to think because of time rather than being pig ignorant, but uh, yeah. Uh, I for an eye work on any physical damage you take. Do you have to take a direct money? Uh, no, it says you get. There's two parts to it. There's a damage reduction part to it, and then there's the counter attack. The counter attack you have to be hit, but the damage reduction is is fine. It can do damage to Guam if you use it on the jump because he's jumping to you, so he's sort of hitting you, so you get a little bit of damage back. It's not much. 
but it's better than nothing. Uh, do I think Blizzard will do vanilla servers? Maybe one day when the game is sort of eking out its last, but they it's quite clear that they are hugely opposed to it. For whatever reason, I can understand some of the reasons. I'm not saying I don't see any reason at all not to do them. I do think that they probably should do them. But I don't but it's pretty clear with what happened over the last year or so that they really are not going to do them anytime soon. <laughs> Swap appearance. Um, people do that a lot. People actually turn me into gnomes. I am instantly remove that, of course. Um, I have a way of like encouraging people not to be gnomes. I have an encouragement technique because I've been quite successful. I've been in a lot of alliance skills where there were gnomes in it at the start of it and not there a few months later. I've been pretty good at bullying people to either race change or just leave. Um, so I'm merciless with my bullying of gnomes. I do not miss a single opportunity. So, and this guy, if I do have to recruit this gnome, I will have to say to him, if he does decide to join us, that he will be bullied mercilessly. Mercilessly. Because I will have the piss taken out of me for recruiting a gnome for a start off. So it's only right. But yes, I, I have a psychological thing about gnomes now. The game, after whatever it is, 12 years, has done this to... Well, not quite 12 years for me. It did come out, actually, pretty close to... Because it was March, wasn't it? When, March 2005 when it came out. I played it in May. I started playing it in May. So it's nearly 12 years since I started playing it. And I wasn't very keen on gnomes in Warcraft 3. I don't even know why they were in it. I don't know why they were ever made into World of Warcraft. It was so pointless. But anyway, there we go. Um, I am going to sort of call uh, it to an end there. So thanks for coming all. I will try and do these like once a month, something like that would be better. Uh, I'll just answer this last one. Do I think, because I actually this is one I do want to answer. Uh, do we think we'll ever see proper player housing? As I understand it, like there's player housing, like it's coming Elder Scrolls Online now. I just went on to get my house yesterday. Um, player housing is something I would like to see. Not the garrison, that was shit. Proper player housing. I see no reason not to do it. I know that Chris Metzen was dead against it. I don't know why. I'm sure he had his reasons. But he's now gone. Now, I'm not saying that's as a good thing, by the way. I, I will miss Chris Metzen. I think he's been awesome for the game and awesome for the company. And I wouldn't want to say a bad thing about him. But I think he's wrong on that. And the fact that he's gone might mean maybe there's a shift of power towards player housing. So will we see it? Maybe. I don't see why we don't have it. I don't even see that it would cost that much. If other MMOs can have it, I don't. Does it really cost that many resources to put it in? No. How can it? And the technology is already there with the garrisons anyway. They've already gone to all the effort of putting up with the technology. Just come up with a decent house. But anyway, I will leave it at there. So thanks for coming all, and I will see you next time. How do I turn you all off? There we go.